Hello everyone, this is Laura from Grain & Company and I'm here today with February's Creative Maker Box. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get started. Nothing, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Nothing um, complicated about this one. There's just a lot of pieces. Um, so I'm really gonna fly by on this one pr pretty quickly because you all know how to do all of the techniques and stuff. Um, in the midst of cutting all of this, because there's a lot of pieces, I did forget to bring some home. So I'm gonna start with the, what I've got and then I will continue on um, for you guys. It'll be all in one video, but I will be continuing on tomorrow when I have the rest of the pieces and then I can be able to assemble it uh, with you guys. So um, I'm gonna stain first and I'm going to zoom by that pretty quickly. Um, I'm not even gonna get you guys to watch me stain just because I know you all know how to do that. So I'm just gonna show you what pieces need to be done. So we are gonna stain our cutting board. We are going to stain um, the chicken wire piece in the front. And I would have stained these little support pieces. Um, you, you might think that you're not gonna see them, but there's just a tiny little lip down here that you see. So I'm going to stain and dry brush them as well so whatever peeks out um, matches so you would stain those as well um, we're going to stain all of these pieces that's for the stand you're going to stain your utensils now we don't use the heart in the um, project itself but it's a cute little heart so I included it whether or not you want to use it on your project or for something else, but I'm just gonna put mine off to the side. Um, you're going to stain um, your chicken. And if I had the tags here, you would be doing the one that says spring tulips, as well as the fresh carrots. So those are your staining pieces. So everything right now, I'm just gonna stick off to the side here. So I'm going to just quickly stain these up. Like I said, I'm gonna pause it. You, you know what to do with staining. All of you on this subscription have all done this box before. So just to speed up this video a bit for you guys, I'm just gonna quickly do it off camera and then I'm gonna come back and I'll show you what I'm doing with the next part. Okay, so I'll see you guys soon. Okay guys, I'm done staining all my pieces. So, um, so I've got the cutting board my chicken wire, I did both sides just because, but you don't need to. Um, and if you had your support brackets, then you would have those too. Um, I did my chicken front and back, and just make sure when you're staining, just be careful down here, because these, these parts are pretty fragile. Um, I did my utensils front and back. Um, the stand is front and back. This is the piece that will go back here for the stand, so you really only need to do the one side. Um, and then on these pieces, I did the whole thing on this one because it is your stand part. And these ones only need to have the good side done because they are the pieces that go front to back like that. So I only did the good side when I stained those. So we're gonna put those off to the side. And once again, like I said, if I had my tags here, I would have stained the fresh carrots and the spring tulip ones, but I thought I brought them home. Okay, so we're gonna set those off to the side to dry. Now I'm going to go into, um, it really doesn't matter. I'm gonna leave the white till after because I have to dry brush um, the cutting board anyway, so I might as well paint my eggs then, save me pulling that color out twice. So I can work on the carrots and I'll go through that really quickly. So you're gonna do greens on the top Orange on the bottom, you don't really have to put a piece of tape here because you can kind of just blend to one and then come down to the other, but you're more than welcome to tape across so they have a defined line. And I there should be enough paint in your kit to do both sides, just, um, just because. Just be careful how heavy you paint just because you know there's only the thickness of these two in the support bracket so you don't want to go super heavy on paint so that way it's it um, makes it a little difficult to shove those pieces in there so um, I'm going to I'll start painting I'll just zoom this I'll uh, speed this one up pretty quickly but uh, 
you guys all know how to how to paint, but um, I will be I will be back shortly. Okay, so I'm just gonna start with my olive, and I'm just gonna squeeze mine on my napkin like I usually do. Okay guys, so now that these are done, I'm just gonna let them dry and then I'm gonna move on to a different color over here. So this is next. I'm gonna do the green on the spring flower. Just chop off my sponge and move on to the next one. So then I'll go really fast again because you don't need to watch me paint. You guys are pros.
Okay, so those ones are done. I'm gonna give these ones a sand and then we'll do the carrot um, bottom while these ones are drying. Just definitely be careful when you're sanding because there's so many different edges on these ones that you can just catch it. So we're just gonna set these ones over here. And then we're gonna do the orange. Okay, so those ones are done. So then I'm going to work on these guys again. Okay, so I'm just going to flip this
Okay guys, so these are done painting. I'm just gonna let them dry here. I'm gonna come back and give these guys a sand. If you stress your carrots, you can do it now too. They're done. All right, I'm not worried about the back being is perfect because you're not going to see it. So now I'm just going to come in and sand all of my stain pieces. I really apologize for the jiggly movement on this video. But that's what happens. Can't attach it very well. Okay, so that one's done. And grab a paper towel, just wipe these off. Okay, so those stained ones are pretty much done. So I'm just gonna get them out of the shot here. And here we go. So just very gently run this over. Doing a whole lot on this side. There we go. I'm gonna need that one eventually. This one, just be very careful. I'm just gonna run it over there. And I'm gonna flip it around so I don't grab onto them. Sometimes when I dry brush, I'll leave this texture on the cutting board. This particular wood that we have now is a bit more grainy compared to the other stuff. So I'm just gonna sand it back a little bit. Um, just to knock that back a bit. So remember, when you're sanding, I won't have the tag one in here. I'm gonna come back later when I have the tags and I'll show you what I did to do the black one because I just didn't paint it. I didn't want it to be that dark so that you can, uh, can't see the details on there. So that one I'm gonna come back and show you on, but the stain tags I'm not. So just make sure you don't forget to do those and I'll do a little reminder in the video. Just, um, it won't be me staining them at all. Sometimes I end up doing this twice, and as much as I thought I brought them home, it was probably me remembering that I brought them home the first time I did this, when I do the one for the photos. So, as I get older, I tend to forget things a little bit easier, as I'm finding. Okay, so this one we will leave as is. Okay, so these are drying. We're just gonna set them off to the side and um, I'll give them a sand here shortly. So, just gonna 
get this away. And I'm gonna flip this over because I need to do some white. Let's tuck that side in, there we go. And then we'll bring these back too because we can do them white now. All right, so uh, what do we got here? Um, which brush do I want? Okay, so I'm gonna use my two inch brush for dry brushing. So if you've got your white paint, I'd suggest taking it out and pouring it on something because you'll find it easier to get your brush going for that. Oh, also remember when you're sanding, you're gonna need to sand those um, bracket pieces, but you also need to just dry brush one. We only need one um, to do. So the other one you can just set off to the side. So I'm just going to do my first run on my eggs here. These ones will probably take me three coats. At least on the front side. I'm not gonna do three on the back because we're not gonna see it anyways, but I'll uh, get one or two on the back for sure. Just gonna give those ones a little longer and then I'll flip them over, not like I did the other ones. Okay, so um, dry brushing, you've all done this before. Um, I'm sure I sent you enough to do the back and I'm trying to think if I did the back. No, I did not do the back of mine. So if you need to practice, then you can use the back of your board, but I'm not sure you have enough paint for that. But, um, I'm just going to do mine on the front. So dip your brush and then take it all off, wipe it, blend it on your brush and then gently move, get your hand moving as you approach the board and start to feather that back and forth. I'll come at it one way first and then I'll flip it over and go from the other direction. And you'll find a lot that I tend to, I'll do it with the wide end, but you'll find after I really start to come in with the short side uh, and then I can really get um, those lines in there. So, because I can really pull on this. There you go, I've already turned my brush sideways there. So you really can just build it up as white as you want. Maybe you are one who likes a bit more on the stain side, but it's uh, you just keep building light layers. I'm gonna flip it over now and come at it the other way. Don't worry if you get too much on there, just start to blend it out. I always end up putting more on my brush than you guys should because I'm a bit more comfortable with this than some of you can be. I know this technique kind of scares some people. definitely going to be moving for this one guys so too when you hardly have any paint on your brush you can come in here and blend blend those sides out because you want to kind of feather the paint that comes um, 
on there, but you don't want to have a brush full of paint or a first dip because you really just want to blend it out. And you might have to do that a couple times because if you do, I'm like I'm doing it right now, but I'm still not done. So I might just come back in after and do it again. Oh, that really is shaky, guys. My apologies. I don't have the best setup in my new house. Just wing it here. So I'm just dabbing on the part where I've really just brushed off all my paint. So just enough to get me to feather this. Okay, I'm gonna lift it up, but okay. So you can kind of see, it's not solid. It's just enough to um, blend that. And now I'm just gonna sit here. And that's really where I like just to use the side of my brush because then I can pull those long strokes in here and kind of just feather that in. So, because you don't really want to cover all that stain up, but you still want to get it on there. Okay. You can definitely make sure you're taking it the whole way. Sure, I'm doing little strokes. Sometimes I do that more when there's hardly anything in my brush because then I can just push really hard and kind of feather and blend. Especially when it grabs on the edge. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that one off to the side for a second. Remember, we have to do this one too. So there's hardly anything in my brush because you don't want it to puddle um, on the in the inside of that chicken wire. So I'm just letting it naturally grab the edge. I'm not doing any fancy thing. My brush is pretty much has nothing in it. So as it hits the edge of all that detail, it's really just taking whatever paint is left in my brush and I'm not worried about which way the grains going on here I'm just trying to you really can't tell too much just trying to get it across now as I do this I want to see how much more white I need to so put it on top of your board and kind of compare and then you kind of know how much more you need to do so So it doesn't need a whole lot, but you want to make sure there's not too much in your brush. You have to push a little harder on those edges because that's really where you're going to see the most contrast if you don't have them close to the same color as your cutting board. one way come back the other this one you really can just come at it from all directions just to help blend that so I'm getting closer I think I'm just gonna do another light coat it's more the edge I gotta put some for the eggs there so um, so I don't want too much more but and you would do this too on this piece you would just do a little bit and it won't take much because you just don't want it to be fully stained because when you put this piece on there I noticed just around the edge on the inside you notice um, the edge of that so just to have it blend a little bit that's just what I did So when you see me go like that, I can see the lines where it wants to do that. So definitely make sure you're feathering those out after you go like this and this across the chicken wire, because then it'll make sure you don't see those 
markings. Okay, I'm thinking I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, no, that looks better to me. So I'm just gonna let it dry. I'm not doing the other side because you are never, ever, ever gonna see it. So one side is enough. Oops, you can see where I stuck my finger in there. Okay, so I'm just gonna blend that out. There we go. Doesn't take much. I'm not gonna do too much more because I've made my chicken wire to go with this. So there, so yeah, just double check your edge. See, I can I built up my white a bit more because we did that extra coat. So now I'm just gonna come back in here and do it one more time just to bring it this white up a little bit get the rest of it out of my brush you know it's hard to see okay and then I got to come back and do a handle Even though the paint is still slightly wet and it's dry brush, like I don't really have a whole lot of paint on my hands from doing this. So like I can touch it already and it's dry. So that's how light your layers should be when you're doing that. So, and if you're careful with, um, with what's on here, you sh really shouldn't have any paint on the back. And I got just a tiny little bit, but I can sand that out. So, all right. So now I'm just gonna go back and do my rest of my eggs. And I'm gonna do that for a few coats. So I'll just come back on, I won't talk again. But I'll just get these done. And then, um, yeah, I'll just end up coming back when I have my tags because there's really not much more I can do until I get all those other pieces finished so I can show you how to assemble it. Okay, so I will see you when I come back next part of my video which to you will look like I've just done it all in the same day all right guys I'll see you soon
Hey guys, okay, I'm back to just finish the last little bit that I had uh, forgotten at the store. So I've stained um, one of these and uh, then I just quickly dry brushed over top of that. Um, we will glue these eventually. And once they are, I'm gonna come back and dry brush the edge so it just kind of blends into the um, cutting board part. Um, but these, I, um, I'm going to show you what I did. So these ones are the Farm Fresh and the Made with Love. Those are the ones that are black. So if I painted them black, you wouldn't see any of that detail. So what I did is take my black paint and I took a baby wipe and we're gonna wipe it on like a stain. Now, if you don't have any baby wipes, you can dilute a little bit of black paint with some water, not, not too, too much, just enough. As you can see, the moisture in this is more than enough. So I uh, put it on my baby wipe. I'm just gonna start in the black, uh, um, sorry, on the back. And I'm just gonna give it a wipe and just make sure I blend it so it's all even. And then I'm gonna come to the front and do that again. Now, I did mine twice on the sample picture, so um, because that way it kind of hid some of the um, some of the weird grain that was going on in my other piece. So that way I can darken it up just a little bit and and uh, yeah. So you do what you prefer. Like if you like one, then you can keep it at one. But um, I like the two coats. So. Um, Make sure I blend it really well there. Okay, so I'm not doing my second, well, I might do my second coat right now. Usually I have to let it wait, so. The back I'm not so much worried about, but you can see on the first coat it really tends to bring out the grain, but the second one will tend to cover that a little bit more, so that's what I'm gonna do, let those dry, and then I'll do that again. So I won't come back and do that, but once it's dry, you'll be able to see um, what I've done. So those are gonna sit. And um, yeah, okay, so let me clean this up and let those dry a little bit. Okay, let's get rid of these. So now we're gonna go into some assembly. So you're gonna need some glue. I need a pin so I can pop my glue here a second. Okay, so grab some glue. I'm gonna grab my cutting board. I'm gonna start with this one first. Okay, so if you want, you could glue these two together and then glue them on here, or you can glue one at a time. It really doesn't matter. I'm just gonna give this a... There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to put mine together this way. Line those up, they are identical, so they should be absolutely looking like one piece. Okay, so that looks Oops. Get pushed too hard. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna give that just a moment. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Okay, that one should be fine. Now I'm just gonna turn this over. Put some glue. And now you'll line them up using those score marks. Try not 
have to get my head in the video. Okay. Okay, so I lined up the top. That one's there. Whoops. Okay, there. And there. And then check my bottom and sides. Okay, they look good. I'm just gonna give that a press. Now, depending on how fast your glue dries, you might not be able to do it as fast as me, but so now when I put this over there, you can see this little lip from this underneath there. So that's why I did it that way. So now on here, you can put your glue on here. So that way, you know, you're only gluing this area and not all the way around by accident on the back of your chicken wire. Oops. Okay, so now there are, it doesn't matter which way, so just grab a s direction and then just lay it on the top. Gently line it up on the sides and the bottom. Okay, so that one is done. So that's how you assemble that one. So we're just gonna let that dry off to the side. And Okay, now I'm coming back with this piece. So this, is, um, this part is the front for sure with the score marks. So we're gonna flip this over and we're going to glue this piece on, okay? Kind of just center it in that area. Pretty much is the same size. It might just go in a little bit on each side, but you could just line it up at the top if you wanted to. It's pretty much the same on the sides. It might just be a smidgen. Um, shorter than that actual area. Okay, so that one's done. And while we're waiting for that to dry, you might as well come in and do the back side to that uh, bottom piece there. did this initially her file just it's not exactly at the ends like this piece is just a little tiny like just a hair longer on each side so just center it and then it's pretty much the same with the cross but I feel like it's still got a little bit of a difference but just centered in that area all right, so I'm going to flip this over, do the same thing. Second to dry, so I'm gonna flip this over. Now I gotta think for a second. I think that's the way it goes. So I just wanna get this to dry for just a second before I start pushing on it. So I think this is the part that inserts here and this little shorter angle is at the bottom, but I just wanna check it before I glue it in because I did glue mine in. Just wanna make sure I got the right angle. Yeah, that's the way. Okay, so it should be a nice snug fit already, which is good, but I wanted to make sure 
I mean, if you want it to come apart, then don't glue it, but you might just find with a little bit of pressure, it might just slide um, out. But So that's why I'm just gonna stick a little glue in mine because I just want it to, whoops, I'm not very clean there, am I? I just want it to stay in there. So I'm gonna get this piece in there and then I'm going to lay, stand it up flat somewhere so you know that it's leaning in exactly like it should be and then it should be standing up like that. All right, so that's where this will rest on just like that. So don't put any extra weight on it till it dries, but that's that's what that part is. And you know, down the road, you can use it for some other sign. It's pretty cool little um, easel stand. So um, who knows, we might add them to our kits just for additional stands for whatever purpose. So um, anyways, I'm just gonna set that off to the side. These are dry, so I'm just gonna quickly do this again. I'm gonna give them a sand first. Just to knock down that, I should have sanded without my gloves, but that's okay. Okay, now I'm gonna do it one more time. And you'll be able to see the difference. So I'll show you one, and then you can see whether or not you like, well, this, the lighter or the darker, so. Um, do this one. So it just kind of hides that grain a little bit more. You don't want to over wipe. I mean, you want to get it on, but you don't want to play with it too much that it starts to lift it again, but it kind of hides that grain a little bit more. And once we sand, it's going to lighten it again. So you'll be able to see that detail a little bit more. So there you go. One coat, two coat. This will dry, we'll sand it. So it will lighten a bit, but um, it, I just like the contrast a little bit more because this was just too close to the stain. Hold on, I got. Let's do this. Without putting a second coat on, you can see it's just too close to the stain look. And be, there, remember, going against stained pieces like the chicken and stuff. So I wanted there to be just a bit more contrast. So that's why I'm doing two. And remember, you don't have to do the back side because you're really not going to see it. Um, Okay, so those are gonna just sit and dry there for a moment. And then we're gonna go and put together um, the other pieces. So let me grab them. Okay. So with these pieces, make sure your area's clean. Um, fresh carrots and that. So we're gonna make sure all your pieces are sanded. Uh, I don't think I sanded the top of the pink yet, so I'm just gonna do that right now. Oops. Okay, so these ones you don't need um, because these are the, aren't the ones we're gonna tie um, our um, tag to. So I'm just distrusting the edges a little bit more. Okay, so I'm just gonna set that one off to the side. So this is the one we're gonna use and you'll have your strings. All right, I think I, hold on a second. I don't know, I kept changing things up a bit. Let me see. Uh, oh, no, I lied guys. This one I tied, this one I tied on the big one because just by the way it was sitting in there, I'm just gonna do this. Okay, so this one goes in, got my back or front. See, it painted so well, I can't tell which side is which. It don't matter, I'm just gonna put them in this way for now. So just based on the way the tag was sitting, it was easier for me to tie it around this one because it could hang off a little bit better. So that one, yeah, okay. So I'm gonna take my string. You know, sometimes I just wing it, guys. And <laughs> sometimes when I'm figuring these out, it's, uh, I'll do it one way and then I'll take it apart and do it another way. So 
I'm thinking from my picture it looks like it is um, this one so yeah I just um, made a loop at the bottom like folded it in half folded it in half took the loop part at the bottom and shoved it in from the back create yourself your loop here whoops make sure your strings are even Okay, let's start that again, guys. Okay. In half. Loop part through the back of the hole. Fingers through the loop. Pull those strings through. And there you go. So with this one, I just kind of came in. The string's probably longer than you need, but um, I wanted to make sure you guys had enough. So. I'm not fully tying it yet. I want to make sure I can maneuver this where I want so it doesn't hurt for you to set this inside and play play with it. I don't remember which way this guy goes. So if your paint job is that good that you can't see your those flashing marks in the back, then use it whichever way you like. You guys have been the shot. Okay, so I think I've wrapped it around once and I think that's okay. And then I'm just going to give it a knot in the front. So then that way it can hide, um, set off to the side, and then it'll cut off those tails. Okay, so remember so the spring tulip bun we're tying on the right hand side, and then this flower can go either way depending on on uh, how well you may have covered those markings. So that is the first one. Carrots. The carrot I know for a fact we tie around the small one. So this one is all sanded and I'm not sure which way I stuck it in. I have the group picture so I only have the utensils in the in my picture. So um, the carrot though for the one in the front it's facing this way. So same thing. Take your string, through the back, take that loop, pull the strings through, and tighten it up. All right, so come from the front, take those strings around the back, bring them forward, and then just before I tie it, I just bring it in here and make sure where you want it or how you want it and then you can give it a nice tight kind of holds it in place too so it's not going to wiggle on you while you tie it so and just cut your strings okay he's done and yeah you're not gluing these two pieces together you're just letting them um, sit in there sorry if you hear my son yelling he's playing a game downstairs and it sounds like he's like being killed that's how funny it is so if you hear it that's what it is um okay so the next ones um are these guys so i'm just gonna give them uh another minute so i'm just gonna pause for a second and give those a second to dry and then i'll come back and do the other two okay i'm back i think they're good enough so i'm just gonna quickly give them a sand So even though I'm sanding, they still keep that richness, but you still can see um, the words without it being like super dark if you were painting it. So it works for me. If you want to paint them a different color, you can um, so paint your chickens and stain your tags. You can do that too. Um, that is totally up to you. I love seeing those pictures. Um, on our group page when everyone posts um, and there's a different color combo so really cool all right so these are farm fresh so t same thing now this one we're going to tie around the chicken so i'm hoping I, i'm sure i tied this one right so this one is a little bit weirder because i can't just tie um straight around and center everything because it looks a little weird so you're kind of gonna offset this tag so he's kind of hanging here let's put him in first so you know what I mean. okay so if I tie it right in the center it kind of looks funny so I kind of 
make sure the tag is hanging more towards the front of the chicken. And then um, you gotta kind of tie it. This is the this is the only one that would bug me. So let me just because I want to get that knot right in the front. I don't want it hanging um, right with uh, in the middle. So I'm kind of having to. My string is definitely shorter on one side, and you can kind of play with this loop thing and make one string longer than the other, but um, I'm just kind of making it do here. But you kind of want to get that knot right in the front because it just looks better. So, so there we go. And then I'm going to just cut off the rest of those pieces. So there we go there. And then these guys are the eggs. So then when you put them together, Put the two bigger ones at the bottom. Oops, they're supposed to go in a little straighter than that, but that's fine. There's the two eggs, three eggs, and your chicken. So that's that one. Okay, I'm just gonna gently pull him out. We always wanna be careful with him because he's got those little pointed feet and they tend to catch on quite a few things. So that one is done. And the other one is this one. So this one too is going to be um, tied on the rolling pin just because it, suit, it uh, works better and gives it a little bit of character on the side there. So, all right, so I'm just going to start with it around here. Wrap it around and then I'm just gonna bring them over here and place them in here and I'm just gonna stick this one in here. And then I can kind of pull and he's gonna sit put. There we go. All right. And he's done. So I know it wasn't something super complicated. I know you've all done these techniques before, but I really liked this one. I thought it was cute. And the designer, um, I've already put in, um, a message into her asking if we could have some other designs for fall, you know, and winter. I'm really talking with my hands, guys. Um, and Christmas and stuff. So um, if you want to add those on down the road, you can. Um, now I'm just going to, while this is now dry and I've put those together, I'm just going to grab my brush. Uh, let's see, I've got this one here. And I'm just going to dry brush those edges so you can see. Let me move this. So yeah, like they're fine like that, but I find it just kind of blends it in a little bit more. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of paint and whatever brush you got, all my other ones are kind of wet or I just want something smaller to get in here. So just very lightly come in here and paint those edges. Yeah, you'll get some on your other part of your board, but if you're not putting a whole lot on, you're not gonna really make a difference. If you get any, you can always just gently blend it out. See, just enough that it kind of makes it work there. So, so I'm just gonna gently take it along the top here. I'm just gonna do the sides first so I know I have enough paint. Probably not. Okay, just a little bit there. Oh, a little heavy there. But we can just blend that out and then you can come and do the bottom. Okay, just like that. There. A little bit more. Okay, so just like that. I know the insides are like that, but you know what? It gives that rustic feel. You're gonna have things inside there anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but the outside kind of gives it a bit more seamless look. 
by having those edges done there. So, all right. So I hope you enjoyed that and uh, we will see you guys again in uh, March and that will be for our, an Easter uh, design there. Okay. Thanks guys again for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye.